Hey everybody, uh, Jim Sounds here. I haven't done one of these in a while, so um, I've been getting quite a few questions on our YouTube channel, Kayak Fishing Tales, and on our Facebook page and Instagram and all that. So I uh, wrote down a few of these questions or printed up a few of these questions and figured I'd answer them. Um, so as always, if you recall, our uh, live broadcast brought to you by Ballast Point. How about and extra tough to keep my uh, Ballast Point cold. We're going to have a little Ballast Point grunion uh, in honor of my good buddy Ulf. Um, it was his favorite beer when he was here visiting from Sweden. Um, so cheers to you Ulf. We miss you already. It was a awesome trip spending time with you guys and some great fishing. So um, yeah, so like I said, I'm just going to answer some questions and if you have questions, throw them out there as well. Um, but like I said, I grabbed some that were that were on the uh, Facebook page as well as the YouTube channel. So I just figured I'd just jump into that and uh, answer some of these questions and uh, see if we can uh, clear up some things for you. So um, the first question I got, and unfortunately I didn't grab the names off these. I should have done that and I, I wasn't thinking, but... Um, one of the questions was, do I buy pre-rigged hooks or bare hooks and tie my own rigs? Um, I'm a novice, don't fish much, but increasing my time on the water. Um, you know, there's a lot of really good pre-rigged stuff and, and I'm not hundred percent sure where you're going with this. I mean, pre-rigged pre like with your, um, Mustad, uh, Sabiki rigs or bait catchers, they make them in a variety of sizes and styles for different bait sizes so those definitely pre-rigged i know some guys will tie their own but uh, i don't have that many hours in the day oh not when there's so many good quality uh pre pre-made rigs um other pre uh tied rigs that uh, assist hooks um for your vertical jigging there's some really good ones out there um also uh sometimes i'll make my own so um the uh yeah, like I said, it just kind of depends on what it is. I do make my own wind-on leaders. Uh, we do have some videos up on how to make your own wind-on leader. Uh, I like making those. Um, I have confidence in them. I can make them in a variety of sizes, lengths, uh, pound tests. And uh, to me, that's a better way to go because uh, the pre-made can get a little bit expensive. So the initial investment in... Hi, Sierra. <laughs> the initial investment in uh, starting to make your own uh, pre-made wind-on leaders is a bit much. You know, you have uh, a jig to hold the line and you have the needles and all that. But once you once you have that stuff, the price per leader goes way down. So, um, like I said, if you want to learn how to make those pre-tied leaders, we do have some videos up on uh, kayak fishing tails. Um, Let's see, uh, this was another note from a guy. Thanks for the vids and these series of tips too. Hope to see you break another personal best on video. <laughs> Can't stop for some reason. Uh, I assume you mean um, swapping out treble hooks uh, for single hooks. And yeah, that, I, I'm big on that, particularly when you get lures like, I, I broke some out here. We're bringing these to um, Brazil for the peacock bass and you know, multiple treble hooks and some of these have three treble hooks on them and you, know, you get a fish flailing around when you're on a kayak that's pretty dangerous so I do like swapping those out for single hooks now if you look at a lure like this Seville Splasher uh, you have the inline rings attached to the um, lure itself and I assume you can probably see that over here um, and then you have a, a snap ring which just hangs below that so if you use a regular J hook or circle hook like these here. These are Mustad uh, live bait big gun hooks. So if I put that on here with that ring, the hook is actually going to sit sideways. And that tends to snag a lot. So if you're going to do it, I, I really suggest you go with something more like the uh, Mustad inline hooks because unlike the other one I just had out there. So you can see this one, the, the eye of the hook is this way. This one, the eye of the hook is straight in line with the hook. So when I attach that to the ring, 
it's now going to be in line with the body of the lure. And it's going to be a, it's going to snag a lot less and you're also much less likely to get a hook in yourself. So if you are swapping those out, um, you can put this right on the back end and it, it's, a, it's a deadly way to do it. Um, and it's going to be much, going to snag a lot less weeds and much less likely to snag you. So that's what I do if I'm swapping out those uh, treble hooks for J hooks or circle hooks. Um, oh, here was one. Marlin, how many have I caught without a mothership? Um, well, the mother shipping thing is, is always a, a funny deal. People, you know, make a big deal about mother shipping. And quite honestly, you know, we, we, we're, we're shooting a TV show, so we've always got a camera boat with us. Um, and the other thing is, as when I was doing guided trips down in Mexico, we always had the mother ship with us as well because as a safety precaution, you know, you get somebody hooked into a billfish and it goes greyhounding across. I mean, there's always a danger factor there of somebody being impaled. So for the, the safety of my clients, I always had a mothership. So a great majority of the billfish we've got have had a mothership involved. Now that doesn't mean that we're not um, doing a heck of a lot of paddling. Uh, when we go out marlin fishing, I mean, we'll paddle sometimes up to 20 miles a day. You know, the, the boat is just there as a safety precaution and it's there for our camera guy. Uh, I'm gonna take one break real quick. Can you close those blinds? I got this weird lighting yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, I know. It's nice <laughs> so, uh, the sun is setting off to my side and we've got some light coming in. So we're gonna. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that got really dark all of a sudden. Um, so yeah, you know, we, the mothership is there as a safety thing. That's just maybe turn on that light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just um, There we go. <laughs> That's better. We got a little uh, some lighting issues there. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, the mothership there thing is there for our camera guy, and it is there for for safety of my clients or people we're with. Um, the, the very first marlin I got was I paddled out to uh, I paddled out to shore from shore with my friends here in San Diego in La Jolla, and uh, that fish dragged me eight miles out to sea, and I paddled back. And I'm I'm quite capable of paddling all the miles you want. I may be fat and old, but I can I can paddle. So you know we we do put in the miles, and I would never take a hand off. I I have you can talk to my cameraman, anybody who's ever fished with us. I've never taken a hand off, and I've never hooked a fish off a boat and got in a kayak, anything like that. So we try to do it as pure as possible, but we also have to be safe, and we also have to get the shots. So uh, let's see another question here. Uh, Jim, great video. Would you say the big rig is usable for fishing along the coast and for fishing perhaps a hundred yards offshore? Or do, not, do I need a longer and slimmer kayak? I would like the stability. Well, you're not gonna get much more stability than you're gonna get out of a big rig. So if ultimate stability is what you want, the big rig is a fantastic kayak. Um, but if you're doing the stuff that we do, which is definitely more than 100 yards offshore, um, you know, we may be putting in, you know, be three miles offshore. And um, as long as you're, you're comfortable in the kayak, I personally always opt for speed over stability. You know, that's, that's just me. I, I like a faster boat. Um, I like... Um, a kayak that cuts through the water really well. I like a, a, a kayak that launches through the surf well. So for me, that means longer, faster. But that does not mean these other boats don't work. Um, like I said, if you really need that stability, you're just a really big person, yeah, go that way. Go go to the more stable boat. Um, hi, Liz. <laughs> Where do I get my awesome clothing? Well, I got this awesome shirt from Siegler Reels. <laughs> um, I'm not wearing a Siegler hat today. Um, yeah, I <laughs> got distracted there. So yeah, um, stability is great, but as I always say, you can learn stability, but you'll never make a slow boat fast. 
Um, and, and when we talk about speed, it's never talking about, you know, how fast is the kayak itself? It's how much effort do you have to put in out to move the kayak through the water all day long? You know, you can paddle five miles out first thing in the morning when it's grease calm, but then paddling back five miles when you have a headwind or current and chop, anything like that can be much more difficult. So the, um, the longer, faster boats just, to me, work much better. Uh, next question. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. Do I troll much? And if so, how do you like the tough tube for holding the big offshore rods? Um, yeah, the, the tough tubes, as long as it's with the um, spline base, so the post goes into the base, uh, versus the um, the ball mount, they will hold just fine. Now, with that said, um, if I'm trolling a live bait, my reel is pretty much always out of gear, clicker on. So just enough pressure on the line to hold the bait in place. If I am trolling a, a hard lure, you know, say if I'm trolling this, well, I need to set the hook. You know, with a live bait, that fish can pick it up and run with it, uh, so you want light tension. But with a hard lure, you know, you want to set the hook. So when I'm doing that, I don't generally put the rod in the rod holder. I usually will tuck that rod down kind of across my body and underneath my arm. It doesn't interfere with my paddle stroke at all. If a fish hits it, I just feel the, the rod hit me in the side and I can grab it, but it's not gonna put that pressure on the rod holder. Uh, if you get a big fish, rod holders can break. Uh, and probably one of the tougher things that I found when you do that is if the rod holder is, or if the rod is in the rod holder, so let's say this is the rod butt going down into the rod holder, what happens is it gets kicked to the side because of that pressure, and then it literally gets locked into the rod holder. And so you have a fish pulling on your, on your line and you can't get your rod out of the rod holder. So in that instance, um, you know, it can be very tough. So that's why I prefer when I'm fishing with that tighter drag, not to put the rod in the rod holder. If you are gonna do it, make sure maybe you're using more of a flush mount style that you've been able to back up. So you put some good support on the back side of it. So it's gonna be really bulletproof for the pressure. I know, I think that's what the guys in Hawaii do. Uh, let's see what's, uh, I know there are very variables to this question. If you wanted to get a kayak for offshore fishing and it did not have a center hatch for rods and have to launch in the surf, do you need the center rod hatch? Well, no, you don't need the center rod hatch. Um, but if you are launching through the surf, um, and if you do like to keep fish, it, it certainly is an advantage. I mean, for years and years before the, uh, uh, we designed the Ocean Kayak Tridents and then now with Jackson Kayak and, and the Krakens, and, you know, before this big center hatch came out, uh, if you had a big fish on or your rods, you just shimmied up to the forward hatch, you had a big forward hatch and put your rods in there. Uh, the center hatch has just made that a lot, I mean, so much easier. Hey Martin, how you doing? Um, so yeah, it's more of a, making it more convenient. I can get to the rods, I can get to my game bag while I'm seated in the kayak and not have to shimmy forward to that forward hatch. So you don't absolutely need that, the center hatch, but uh, I think you will find it a, a huge advantage. Like I said, I've got that big, I got that big insulated game bag that fits in my center hatch. Uh, I know the guys in Hawaii do the same thing. Um, so getting that fish down inside the bag on ice out of the sun to me is a much better way to go. And then for getting in and out of the surf, you know, being able to protect those rods because that's where more stuff gets lost and damaged in the surf zone than anywhere else. So if you want to protect your gear, I've got a dog under my feet. <laughs> uh, if you want to protect those, uh, those rods and reels, particularly, um, make sure, you know, that you do use that center hatch. If you've got substantial surf, even if you don't have a center hatch, it's better to lay the rods down than have them up in a rod holder. Cause if you get a, 
if you get rolled over with them up in a rod holder, you have more potential of snapping them. Um, you know, also, if you have a reel that is subject to being damaged, you know, maybe take the reel off, put it in a dry bag for those launches and landings. Uh, that's one of the reasons I love Siegler reels. They handle that abuse. Um, let's see. Next question. What rod do you have paired with a Siegler SS? The SS is the uh, star drag. So I use that one for throwing, uh, mainly I use that one for throwing surface iron here. So I use a eight and a half to nine foot um, long, basically what we call a deckhand rod. It doesn't have a real seat. So you have the rod clamp and put it so you can adjust it. So it's in the right position for your grip and your cast ability. But I use that for mainly for the long casting because I think it's such a great casting reel. Um, what rods am I using now? It was a question I got uh, on one of our, our uh, YouTube uh, videos. Uh, the rods I'm using now are actually Century, um, Advanced Fishing Products, um, Century rods. Um, they are some of the most powerful yet lightweight rods. I mean, incredible rods that, that I've been using. Uh, the vertical jigging rod um, is just beyond compare. Uh, acid wrapped if you haven't fished with an acid wrapped rod it, it's it's just amazing um, so yeah century rods um, advanced fishing USA um, and uh, fantastic stuff I, I've got light rods from them and all of them are just uh, they're, they're so light yet so incredibly powerful and, and it's I've, I don't know that I've ever found a combination of that lightweight yet power and just just top quality. Uh, I've never fished with better rods, so uh, I hope I can continue to fish with their rods for a long time. Uh, da, da, da. What is your go-to rod and reel setup for yellowtail? Um, my go-to setup, I mean, it kind of changes. Um, if I am trolling, I'm gonna use one setup. If I'm tossing out live baits, it's gonna be another setup. Um, if I'm vertical jigging for them, I'm using another setup. So, you know, for vertical jigging, a six foot rod, um, like I said, I use that Century Acid Wrap rod and I use the uh, Siegler uh, Large Game Narrow. Um, for trolling, I may use a Large Game Narrow. I may use a Small Game. Um, I did bring this one out because this thing, I, I've actually just fallen in love with these reels here. Uh, this is the uh, Small Game Narrow. Um, and I've landed so many big fish on this. I mean, big tuna. Um, I got 114 pound uh, halibut on this little tiny reel. So uh, this has kind of become my go-to reel for a lot of my live bait fishing. It's just such a fun, comfortable. I mean, yeah, I mean, I can cover that whole thing up with my hand and I can still land 100 pound fish with it. So pretty cool reel. Um, if you ever get a chance to try one of these out, I don't, I don't think you would regret it. Really, really fun. Um, let's see. What are my thoughts on the new Jackson FD? That's the, um, that is the, uh, flex drive. That's their new pedal drive. Um, and I've been on it a few times. Honestly, I haven't spent a ton of time on it yet. I'm looking forward to spending a little bit more time on it. I, I mean, I'll be honest with you straight up. I'm a paddler. I love paddling. So the whole, um, pedaling thing is a little bit different for me it's a it's a different motion i mean i can paddle all day but i have a hard time walking around the block so the legs don't get the same exercise so i'm looking forward to spending more time on it uh, the, the i think the, the main thing i would say about the flex drive that i'm really impressed with is the fact that they didn't rush it they they had planned on releasing this thing months ago and it just got released this week because they were waiting to make sure they got it right, to iron out any bugs. So the boats that get out to the public are going to be ready to go. So um, like I said, I'm looking forward to spending time on it. Uh, we were in uh, Louisiana, Jameson was using it offshore, fishing for the big tuna. He absolutely loved it. And then we turned around and, and used it um, inshore for the redfish. So he was having a great time on it. I know everybody who's been on it has um, really, really enjoyed it. So, um, like I said, I'm looking forward to spending more time on it. I'm not gonna give up my paddle. I still love my Warner paddles and uh, I'll continue doing that. But uh, 
you know, there, there's that's the beauty of what we have going on right now in this industry. There's so many different boats and for different applications. I mean, I can see uh, bounce balling for halibut with this thing and be much more effective than with a paddle. Um, holding yourself over structure is going to be very effective. So definitely going to be using that boat some and uh, looking forward to, again to, to getting a better feel for it and maybe getting my legs in shape. Um, well, here's one, uh, and this is one I actually get quite often, is what is my favorite fish to target? Um, you know, that's, that's so hard to say. Uh, you know, I love billfish. Um, I, I've said it before, if we had tarpon here in San Diego, I would fish for those things every day. I mean, what a spectacular fish. Big fish that, that pull hard and are so acrobatic and are so much fun to, to catch. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I love those tarpon, um, in more reasonable size fish or, or say locally, of course, I mean, I love my yellowtail. Um, I like catching thresher sharks. They're just a lot of fun because again, very acrobatic. Um, probably one of the, the first exotic fish I ever caught that I've been in love with ever since I first caught them is rooster fish. Um, I mean, they, again, a powerful fish. You can watch that thing come in on the surface and chase down your bait very kayak accessible as well uh, because you generally catch them pretty close to shore so um, you know you, you literally can catch them right in the surf zone or just beyond the surf zone so uh, just a, just a beautiful strong fish and terrible tasting they're they're a horrible food fish so pretty much everybody catching releases them which is awesome so you just get bigger and bigger fish. I had a client get a uh, about an 85 pounder when we were down in Baja, uh, down in uh, the East Cape area. Uh, my biggest I actually caught in Panama, and that one was, um, I think it was 72 pounds off the top of my head now. Um, but I've caught a lot of them in that 50 pound class, and believe me, you hook into a 50 pound rooster, you are uh, in for a, uh, a heck of a sleigh ride, <laughs> a heck of a tussle. Um, one of the other questions I got here, um, I actually I got an email from a gal said that she was um, looking for a gift for her, um, for her boyfriend. Uh, and he loves kayak fishing and he has most everything, but what should I get him? So uh, I kind of went through what, what they had and... and um, one of the things that I really like, uh, and it'll make her feel better about him being out on the water, is the um, Yak Attack Visi Carbon Pro with the flag on it and the light, um, because it's a, it's a great safety device. It, it, it's out of the way on the kayak. You can mount that at the back of the kayak, so it'll give um, her some peace of mind when he's out on the water. And um, believe me, it makes a huge difference in seeing people. Uh, I, I've mentioned this in some um, some videos in the past uh, that, and I, I kind of went on a rant about it while I was in uh, talking with some other people. I, I don't remember what exactly where it was, but um, I have a boat, um, and I fish a lot from my, off my boat as well as the kayaks. And being a kayak fisherman for for a very very long time, uh, I went out one day into the fog uh, to La Jolla. And knowing the area as well as I do, I was really creeping around because I know there was a lot of kayaks out there. And I came to a really big realization quite quickly is uh, we as kayak anglers out there on the big water are invisible. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, it's amazing. Even on a clear day, if there's a swell, we are invisible. So, um, you know, the bright colored PFDs, um, but even just having that flag up a little bit higher than your head, it, it makes a huge difference in being able to spot people. I mean, I literally, I was out there that day and there was these kayak anglers out there, most of them on, you know, dark colored kayaks, which I like. I mean, I like dull colored kayaks. Um, a vast majority not wearing a PFD. None of them had lights. Um, it was, uh, it was pretty tough. We had three people on the boat all looking forward. And it was amazing how all of a sudden a kayak would just appear out of the fog. And again, no lights or anything. So, you know, when you're out in those conditions, definitely have that, uh, 
whether it's the Visi Carbon Pro or some light source, even if it's a you know a Princeton headlight, whatever, get a light on you, get a flag on you, make sure you're seen, and uh, never assume anybody sees you. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is is you think somebody sees you and maybe they don't. So never assume anybody sees you. Get make sure you're seen. Um, and, and that Visi Carbon Pro, like I said, it's, it's a it's a great little product. So, um, so that's kind of just a few questions that I, I had that I printed up uh, real quick this afternoon. Um, I, I got to get back to doing this more often too, because I do get questions every day, and I enjoy doing these things. So, I'm going to try and get back to doing more of these live videos. Um, hey, Jim Ramey, I haven't seen you in a long time, brother. <laughs> How are you doing? Um, so if you have questions for us, please shoot them my way. And I'm always happy to answer questions. If you want to give me a shout, send me an email. Um, I will answer any questions I have, whether it's about you know the products we're using or about conditions or techniques or whatever. Um, I can speak to technique on a lot of different fish because I have been able to fish around the world. But if I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know and I'll try to point you in the right direction. Um, so yeah, our next, uh, let's say another question I constantly get, I didn't write it down, but is, where are you headed next? Uh, actually our next trip is to um, Brazil. We're gonna go fishing, um, kayak fishing on the uh, Amazon. And uh, we'll be targeting the peacock bass and all the other fun species there. That's why I have this great box of lures from High Roller, which is upside down, but these things are just beautiful, beautiful lures, and these are like I said, triple, <laughs> triple trebles. It's just dangerous. But uh, these are the prop baits, so I'm really looking forward to throwing those things and getting down to Brazil. That's our next one, and then uh, we're gonna we rescheduled our Belize trip, um, which we were supposed to do, but unfortunately Hurricane Harvey uh, came through and ruined the plans for that so we'll be going back to uh, Belize now that's been rescheduled for January I believe and then I think we're going back to Panama with Pesca Panama in um, February so uh, a lot of, a lot of great trips coming up and, uh, I have five dogs at my house right now so I'm surprised they've been quiet um, so yeah we're gonna got a lot of great trips going on and um, you know we've uh, shot aired over 100 episodes already uh shooting right now for our uh ninth or tenth year on the air now so pretty excited and uh pretty pretty blessed to be able to continue to do this um i will say this um kind of wrap up actually there was one thing i got oh that's kurt pier i got to meet you years ago thanks for the inspiration about the sport your camera team came to matt lachey florida years ago kurt that was our very first shoot, dude. <laughs> That's so funny. Kurt Peary, uh, message. He was our uh, our host and boat driver um, on our very first shoot before we had the TV show. While we were still doing the uh, the game on videos, and uh, that was where it all started. It was in Matt Lachey, Florida, and. Uh, we had a big crew back then, um, multiple cameras, still camera guy and all that. Now we do it with just me and, and Will Richardson, my cameraman, and one other guy. Sometimes we'll have two cameras, but very rare. So uh, glad you checked in there, Kurt. Uh, that's, a, that's a fun memory. I remember the um, pink dogs. We stayed at the Sun and Moon. Was it Sun and Moon Inn, I want to say? Sun and something like that. Um, and they had a pink poodle or something it was a dyed pink poodle uh, super fun trip and it was uh, quite the learning experience for me that was my first time on camera uh, it was uh, like I said that was a long time ago now uh, and that's I mean that's got to be 11 12 years ago now I would say so uh, yeah it's, it's been a fun run <laughs> had a lot of, that is so funny that you uh, you hooked up there Kurt I'm glad you did man cheers to you So uh, anyway, like I said, please do send me um, some questions if you have them, um, whether again on Facebook or on our YouTube channel. 
and we're gonna we're gonna try and get back to doing this on more of a routine. Like I said, we've had I had so many back to back trips, and then I had my friend Ulf and his wife Ina here from Sweden uh, for two weeks, and so just really gotten out of the, out of my habits and um, trying to get back back to doing this and uh, you know answering questions more and uh, just shooting more. So. Uh, I appreciate you guys all uh, sitting through the uh, video here today, and it was great to check in with some of my friends there. I'm glad you stopped by, and uh, we'll keep at it. Hope to see you on the water. Please uh, subscribe to Kayak Fishing Tales if you haven't done so already, and remember, please always wear your PFD. Um, what am I drinking? I am drinking a Ballast Point Grunion. Um, Ballast Point's my favorite beer, and they've got a variety of good ones, and my buddy Ulf, this was his favorite beer while he was here from Sweden, so uh, I was uh, had one in honor of my buddy Ulf. So again, cheers to you all. Thanks again. You guys have a good night.